is the thinking of a devotee. All right, we're going to go on now to mantra two. Who would like to chant it for us? First line, one line at a time. Can, oh, can we put it on the screen? Can we share the screen? You know, I, I don't have a, my own computer crashed and I borrowed this computer. I'm not very familiar with it. Haribol, Maharas? Yes. Can, can I you share the Mantra two? Yeah, would you like to put the text on the board, on the screen, and then we can all, everybody can chant? Uh, I do not have the soft copy. Balram Kinkar Prabhu? Yes, Mother, yes, Prabhu. Yeah, can you share the uh, text, the book? Prabhu, if you can... Uh, I can share, actually, then, but uh, I need to... Yeah, uh, Prabhu. You need to be host, I think. Yeah, host, 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 host will once. Okay, Prabhu. Prabhu is there, no? Chidana. Chidana Prabhu is there, yes. Chidana Prabhu, do you have uh, this one, soft copy? Oh, yeah, I have Vedabes. also. But if I can yeah. be... Vedabes. It's in the Veda base. Yeah, yeah. It's... Also, Prabhupada books. Oh, here yeah, also. Okay, very good, yes. Kurvan Evaha Karmani Kurvan Evaha Karmani Jivishakchatamsama Jivishakchatamsama Ivam Tvaye Nanyate Tosti Ivam Tvaye Nanyate Tosti Na Karma Lipyate Nare Na Karma Lipyate Nare All right. So we'll go on to the translation. Somebody like, let's see who, I brought the list of names of the devotees here. Maybe I'll, I'll read out some name and you, if you're here, you can read, right? What about Tribanga Gopal? Is he here? Tribanga Gopal? No? He is not here. Okay, he's not no, here? He is not here. Uttama Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Okay, you can read for us Prabhu, read translation and begin the purport. One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working that way. For that sort of work, do not bind him to the law of karma. There is no alternative to this way for men. Purport? Okay, wait. Before you go on, let me ask you. Prabhupada is translated like this. He said, one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way. So what is that way? Prescribe you speak up? I can't hear what you're saying. Uh, Maharaj, what Prabhupada wants to say, um, if, if he can continue to do work, if that karma doesn't have a karma bandhan, means entanglement of karma, if it is not there, he can continue to do work. Well, 
I don't think that's exactly the point which Prabhupada was making in the last verse. Yeah, last verse, Prabhupada was saying that we we should work without uh, attachment, and also we should have that uh, know that the proprietorship is uh, lordship. Yeah, everything belongs to Lord. So, so what was the term Prabhupada used? Tyagathena. Uh, you would enjoy whatever has been allotted to you. No. There was a particular term Prabhupada used. He's talking about working in a particular way. Mentioned in the last verse. Lipate? No. Maharaj? Maharaj? Maharaj is Isha Vasyam? That's the word. That's the word we want. So, what, the, what is the meaning of Isha Vasyam? Everything controlled by Lord. Everything controlled by the Lord. Owned, well, owned by Lord. God centered. God centered. Yes, God centered. That's correct. That's what. That's better. That's the way to put it. It's God centered. Right. The Isha goes on working in that way. That way, this in the spirit of Ishavashya, in the spirit that Krishna of God is in the center, then that sort of work will not bind them to the law of karma. All right, so we'll go into the purport. Go ahead, Hare Prabhu. Uttama Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Varas. Uh, no one wants to die. Everyone wants to live as long as he can drag on. The, this tendency is visible not only individually, but also collectively in the community, society and nation. There is a hard struggle for life by all kinds of living entity, entities. And the Vedas say that this is quite natural. The living being is eternal by nature, but due to his bondage in material existence, he has to change his body over and over. This process is called transmigration of the soul of karma bandhan, bondage by own work. The living entity has to work for his livelihood because that is the law of material nature. And if he does not act according to these prescribed duties, he, he transgresses the law of nature and blinds himself more and more to the cycle of birth and death in the, in the many species of life. Thank you. Very well. So Prabhupada, you can answer for us, Uttama Krishna Prabhu. Prabhupada is talking about everyone wants to live <laughs> as long as they can, they want to drag on. Who was a good example of this? Can you think of some good examples of materialists who want to drag on the life? Uh, drag on the life? Uh, Maharaj, uh, from top to bottom, everybody wants to Drag, of the, drag their life. Uh, I can give one uh, without taking the name in the GCC. There is uh, someone who was taking every day uh, as, as a practical example to get a long life, to get healthy body. Every day, Indian currency, say 100,000 rupees, used to spend, 200,000 rupees used to spend just one particular fish egg from uh, Norway to bring for him to get a long life and to get, live healthy, strong. One of the, one of the king in this vicinity had, has done that. And uh, it was very, very uh, prominent story. No. How long ago was that? Uh, it was uh, just only a couple of years before. Daily 200,000 Indian rupees used to spend only one particular fish which is used to come from Norway. That egg used to he eat just to keep him healthy and live long. 
and every time he has seven doctors with him every woman to be with him mm. okay can, can you give us an example from the scriptures now scripture la mein hiranna ko shibu hiranna ko shibu aap ravana every now and then they are scared kamsa kamsa means yeah yeah okay there are many examples right whoever is living with dhyatmika buddhi or other than worshiping to lord vishnu every even worshiping lord vishnu so we are trying to live as long as possible um in this uh, in this uh, can i give one example our uh, one of our maharaj in his class he said he is recently he left his uh, maharaj has left his body even he said look we being the uh, the leader of the society every moment nobody wants to die even i myself being the leader of the society i want to live long and that i i have a problem i have gone to doctor i take medicine i want to live like long but is there has a difference one is thinking to live long and preach krishna consciousness fulfill guru's mission and one is thinking materially to enjoy but end of the day the moral saying end of the day every one living and dying in this world wants to live long maharaj is it yayati from scriptures I'm sorry. What? Yayati Maharaj. Yayati. King Yayati. King Yayati. Well, what did the Yayati want actually? Uh, the yeah, uh, the body of a youth. No. In, so so he, so he he was cursed yeah. to be old, right? Yeah, so Pracharya cursed him to be old, but he gave yeah. the curse to the son. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. but but then uh, he was so mad after some woman that he went to heaven after her all right anyway let's go ahead so that the problem is is karma bandhana that we're in bondage in the material world taking birth and dying a living entity is caught in this cycle of birth and death because of our karma Let's go ahead. Somebody read second paragraph. Maybe we will ask. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Dandavatana Maharaj. Other What's life. What's your name, Prabhu? My name is Sri Banga Gopal Das. Okay, you come. Okay, go ahead. Hare. Other life forms are also subject to the cycle of birth and death, but when the living entity attains a human life. he gets a chance to get free from the chain of karma karma akarma and vikarma are very clearly described in bhagavad gita actions that are performed in terms of the uh, terms of one's prescribed duties as mentioned in the revealed scriptures are called karma actions that free one from the cycle of birth and death are called akarma and actions that are performed through the misuse of the freedom and the direct one to the lower life forms are called vikarma of these three types of actions that which frees one from the bondage of karma is preferred by the intelligent man ordinarily men wish to perform good work in order to be recognized and achieve some higher status of life in this world or in the heaven but more advanced men want to be free all together from the actions that react and the reactions of work intelligent men will know that uh, both good and bad work equal in one to the material miseries consequently they seek that work which will free them from the reactions of both good and bad work such liberation work is described here in the pages of shri isho banishad hari krishna so prabhu you can tell us please give us some example about karma vikarma and akarma tell us give us what what give us some actual idea what is 
what what you would be doing if you're doing karma or if you're doing vikarma or akarma vikarma totally banned by the scriptures if we do vikarma definitely we will be uh, taking birth again and undergo the suffering because during so the just stage, tell us what kind of things they do vikarma uh, killing cow is a vikarma and the killing a uh, brahmana is a vikarma these are all uh, you know against the shastra and they will be punished in their next life even during the life and the next life uh, according to the law of nature by the arrangement of lord krishna akarma akarma is a karma which doesn't bring good or bad result because we offer all our karma and result to the lotus feet of lord krishna while we uh, do any karma any karmic activity in this material world on the result we are not keeping any attachment that is a karma the karma tell me what is what are you doing a karma uh, whatever the karma he does he doesn't have attachment to the fruits of this activity what about karma karma uh, uh, definitely he get the benefit and uh, for the good uh, pious activity he get the sin for the bad activity and he will be entangled again and again in the material ocean and he will keep on taking birth again and again so, prabhu pad talks about prescribed duties karma is yes. doing your prescribed duties yes mentioned in the scriptures prescribed duties so can you tell us what that would be what would, would what would you be doing what are your prescribed duties uh, our uh, jivatma prescribed duty is to serve the lord uh, we have to follow the scripture and do our karma exact shloka from bhagavad gita i forgot i read i heard the classes i have forgotten yeah, mahaj so i don't think that's quite correct prabhu i'm not very satisfied with this description of karma prescribed duties is mentioned in the scriptures it is a varnashrama dharma the prabhupad mean i do not know uh, maharaj yes varan kshatriya vaishya shudra everybody they have to do according to their uh, 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 you know chadur varnya maya sastam guna karma vipaka cha uh, that's yeah, we don't have any we don't have varnashram dharma today we don't have any varnashram dharma today there's no varnashram dharma so how do we do karma today we have to do k- k- bhagwan krishna in the center and the act oh, as uh, devotional service yes. if you push that akarma that's not karma that's akarma If Krishna is there in the center, that's akarma. Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Right. So karma, yeah, exactly. karma is something which is done for our own material benefit, for the sense enjoyment, Maharaj. It may be. It may be you do shrad for the departed ancestors for the. father or something like that who's left the world and you do the shrad ceremony for him you know that's prescribed duty maintaining yeah. your family also that's prescribed duty looking at you, we have debts to people we have debts to the family we have debts to society we have debts to the nation this is all prescribed duty i have to pay off some debts here and there Hare Krishna. That, that's karma. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Right, but akarma, akarma. Somebody else can tell us what is akarma. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes. Akarma is the devotional service what we carry out 
with unalloyed devotional service at a lotus feet of uh, krishna and uh, devoting all our uh, time mind energy all the ways uh, we serve for the pleasure of uh, krishna yes akarma means devotion of service beginning with hearing and chanting right that's our devote that's akarma and vikarma is it only killing cows and killing brahmans can somebody else say about vikarma which is against the shastra no? yes some mataji tell us what is vikarma hmm? this sinful activity yes and what are sinful activities uh, the six types of uh, sense also which is mentioned in uh, like you know six kinds of sense which a person do which is against the law uh, against the law of nature like kill uh, uh, like what the uh, the six kinds of uh, um things which a person carries out like you know um taking somebody's money uh, ro robbing somebody's money or uh, aggressor aggress uh, these six kind of aggressions all six kinds of aggressors you somebody sells fire to your house or kidnaps your wife <laughs> like uh, those okay. are six kinds of aggressors you can kill them right <laughs> <laughs> no but actually sinful activities we could simply describe sinful activities as meat eating intoxication gambling and illicit sex this is vikarma these four activities right yes meat, father meat fish and eggs is in pure foods animal flesh these things this is this is the vikarma not just only killing cow killing brahm that's very severe very heavy karma yes, but vikarma sinful activities is all centered around these things intoxication gambling meat eating and illicit sex this is all vikarmic activity it brings us suffering but akarma that is hearing and chanting worshiping krishna and karma these are pious activities prophecies your prescribed duties but well, doing your prescribed duty that's also pious you know take care of your family take care of you pay back different debts which we have we have debts to our teachers we have debts to the great sages these different things this is all part of our prescribed duties so that's karma so because yes uh, marat this i wanted to clarify if there are so many other activities uh, but uh, can we be uh, can they be uh, um, Recognized under the term, for example, there are so many other activities other than these four simple activities what we have. Okay? For example, somebody who is following his own whim, he does his own uh, karma. For example, uh, somebody two, two people they don't marry and then they sit together and they try to enjoy. It. And some people they they wanted to enjoy the nature's beauty and they do. There are so many other activities are there, Maharaj. So yes. will that be will that be uh, coming under vikarma or only we will can say that vikarma is only this four uh, sinful? That is my. Yeah, I mean there are of course many ways in which people are sinful. You know, like setting fire to somebody's house is certainly sinful. kidnapping someone's wife is also sinful giving somebody poison is also sinful as you mentioned six kind six kinds of aggressors yeah but generally it's all based on these the basic principle of sinful life 
for an individual is on these four things, based on these four things. But there are many deviations from that, certainly. Many different ways in which people are more sinful. Okay, ordinary men wish to perform good work, to be recognized and achieve higher status of life. That, see, this is karma. And go to, they would like to go to heaven, but more advanced men want to be free altogether from the cycle, from the actions. And re so this is a karma. So they seek that work, that work which will free them from the reactions of both good and bad work. Such liberated work is described here in the pages of Sri Upanishad. So, it's described here, working with the Ishavasha spirit. If we work with the Ishavasha spirit, that is certainly a karma. And therefore, the translation says, one can live for hundreds of years. If you, you can go on working in that way, you live a very long time. Why? Because you're not getting any karma. We all leave the world because of our karma. Our karma takes us out of this body, brings us, takes us to another body. But if we work with the Ishavasha spirit, that nothing belongs to me is all Krishna's, then that is the real Ishavasha spirit. And you can live. You want to live a long time. That's how you do it. Because no karma. Is it clear? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, this, this worshipping of uh, demigods like Ganesha or Shiva or Durga is coming under karma or uh, karma, Maharaj? Karma. Well, it depends a lot on what the motive is. What is your motive? It may, be motive. Just simply, it may just simply be karma. But it could also be V karma. It depends how you worship them and what, what your motive in worshipping them is. If you ask like uh, Krishna Prema, it will be like uh, karma. No, if you ask Krishna Prema, that's, that's okay, that's... That's a karma. There's no karma for that. But generally, people don't worship demigods for Krishna Prima. It's not very common. There are some people who do it. And if they do that, then that's a karma. But that's not really what's encouraged in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna doesn't... Krishna says, you know, people who worship demigods are generally less intelligent. And they worship the demigods to get things which are limited and temporary. But there are, there were some souls, some great souls who also worshipped the demigods as a part of Krishna, seeing them in relation to the Supreme Lord. So if you have that consciousness that you can, you see the demigods as a part of the Supreme Lord and you worship them to go to Krishna, then that is a karma. Like, like Gopi used to worship Katyani Devi? Yes, Gopis worship Katyani Devi to get Krishna as a husband. Yeah. They wanted Krishna as a husband, but not for themselves, but for the pleasure of Krishna. They were doing everything for the pleasure of Krishna. There's no, there was no thought for their own enjoyment, but for Krishna's enjoyment. I think Bharat Maharaj is the example of a person. He worshipped demigods and he worshipped them in relation to the Supreme Lord, knowing that they were part of the Supreme Lord.
Hare Krishna but Maharaj, it's not very down. common. Most people, they worship demigods, they want something material. Or they want to become one. They want the Sayuja Mukti. They want merging into the Brahman. We don't find people really worshipping the Lord, worshipping devas to get bhakti. Okay, go ahead. Someone read next. Uh, let's see who, who we got here. You can read. Uh, Ach Achuta Giridhari. Is he there? Hare Krishna. Yes, please yes. read. The instructions of Sri Ishopanishad are more elaborately explained in the Bhagavad Gita, sometimes called the Gita Upanishad, the cream of all Upanishads. In Bhagavad Gita 3.9 to 16, the personality of Godhead says that one cannot attain the state of Nashkarmya or Akarma without executing the prescribed duties mentioned in the Vedic literature. This literature can regulate the working energy of a human being in such a way that he can gradually realize the authority of the Supreme Being. When he realizes the authority of the personality of Godhead, Vasudev or Krishna, it is to be understood that he has attained the stage of positive knowledge. In this purified stage, uh, the modes of nature, namely goodness, passion and ignorance, cannot act. And he is able to work on the basis of Nash Karmya. Such work does not bind one to the cycle of birth and death. All right. So, nice karmya or akarma, meaning no reactions from the work. So, we're hearing how to do this. Prabhupada talks about you, you have to you have to do prescribed duties as they're mentioned in the Vedic literature. So, prescribed duties in the Vedic literature. That is, of course, the, you know, from we hope that Prabhupada is talking about the devotional service. This literature can reg regulate the working energy of a human being and gradually, gradually realize the authority of the Supreme Being. So it's not immediate, it's going to take some time to come to that level, gradually recognizing the authority of the Supreme Being. We see the Vedas are like that, you come through the Vedas and the Upanishads are like a stepping stone to bring us to the higher thing. Hmm? From the Vedas, very difficult to know Krishna. Takes, takes time. But from the devotee, you know Krishna very quickly. So when he realizes the personality of Godhead, that is to be understood that he's come to the, the nice karmya platform, the positive stage. Above the modes, he's transcended the modes, right? So how do we transcend the modes in Bhagavad Gita? What does Krishna say? About how to transcend the modes of nature? What do we need to do? By devotional service to Lord Krishna. Yes, right. Mam chayo vayabicharena bhakti yogena sevati. By bhakti yoga. We can come to this nice karmya stage, right? If we go through this other process, it's going to take more time. But anyway, we can do it. Just takes, there, there's different ways. 
different paths. Okay, go ahead. Somebody read the next paragraph. Ma Maharaj, just one clarification I want in last paragraph. That if yes. someone is uh, someone is uh, worshipping Lord Krishna for sense gratification, it will be an, under karma or a karma? Worshipping Lord Krishna for sense gratification. Yeah, that would be karma. Okay. Not everybody is worshipping Krishna in the mood of pure devotion. Right? Devotional service can also be in the modes. Devotional service can be in the mode of passion and in the mode of ignorance. You may do bhakti, but you may do it in the mode of ignorance. So, it, everything will depend on the consciousness, the attitude. We can't think just because I'm worshipping Krishna, so it's a karma. No, of course, it's good you're worshipping Krishna, but you have to come to the higher, we have to come to the higher platform. We have to awaken transcendental knowledge. We have to know we're, that worshipping Krishna for sense gratification, that is, you know, you, you, you get sense gratification, that's material. That's not how you get liberation. Sense gratification will entangle you in the material world cause you to take birth again and again. So a devotee should be thinking about how to get free of this world, how to get out from the world of birth and death. That's what we want. Right? Yes, thanks Maharaj. But we say na, Shreya and Priya, Maharaj, we say that even if you will worship uh, Lord Krishna, so he will give us the what is uh, Shreya for us. Well, Shreya is what is for eternal benefit. Shreya is what me means for our eternal benefit. Prayas is temporary benefit. But Shreya is for your eternal benefit. So for your eternal benefit, you have to have, you have to do devotional service, you have to come to the level of pure goodness. Right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. All right. Someone read the next paragraph. Ajita Madhusudan. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I will read Maharaj next paragraph again. Hare Krishna. The instructions of Sri Ishobanishad are more elaborately explained in Bhagavad Gita, sometimes called Gita Banishad. The cream of all the Ubanishad. No, no, we read that. In the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. We read this. Actually, fact, actually, no, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Factually, no one has to do anything more than the render devotional service to the Lord. However, in the lower stage of life, one cannot immediately adopt the activities of devotional service, nor can one completely stop fruitive work. A conditioned soul is accustomed. To working for sense gratification for his own selfish interest immediately or extended. An ordinary man works for his own sense enjoyment and when this principles of sense enjoyment is extended into is extended to include this his society, nation or humanity in general. It assumes various attractive names such as Altruism. Altruism, socialism, communism, nationalism, and humanitarianism. These isms are certainly very at attractive forms of karma bandhana, karmic bondage. But the Vedic instructions of Sri Ishya Upanishad is that if one actually want to leave for any of above isms, he should make them God-centered. 
there is no harm in becoming a family man or an altruist a socialist a communist a nationalist or a humanitarian provided that one executes his activities in relation with isha vasya the god centered conception hari krishna maharaj all right so this is very interesting now proper is explaining about how not everybody is really able to take up devotional service so fully right we all have some you have some responsibilities in the material world and you need you need to get some sense gratification you're not able to completely surrender everything give up everything and just do devotional service we have our own interests probably has said maybe immediate or extended all right i'm sure that's the situation everybody there in the gulf there they are in that situation you you're working you have your own you have to get some uh enjoyment from the work you have to get something out of it for yourself so probably per explain how sometimes people working the working that their interests become more extended they work in you know doing social work welfare work working for the humanity and so proper cause these things isms this is also karma karmic activities right these isms working it's all done on the bodily platform but proper said there's no harm in doing these things if you do them in god consciousness we don't want to do them in the bodily consciousness you want to so we also do welfare activities we're doing a lot of food distribution in mayapur here with the covid with the lockdown many people in difficulty every day our vehicles go out to distribute prasadam in different areas around mayapur and so we do it in god consciousness we give people prasadam and we have the chanting of hari krishna so you want to do welfare activities prabhu talks about krishna consciousness as being spiritual communism not we're not against communism if it's on the spiritual platform so all of these different philosophies which people have they can all be purified with krishna consciousness any question about this maharaj sir spiritual karma gratification maharaj hari krishna maharaj hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna maharaj the ritual karma as prescribed in uh, vedas they are meant for only prosperity originally they are meant for prosperity i'm i'm sorry i can't hear you very well you can't hear me oh i'm sorry can you speak a bit louder uh the the, the ritual karmas as prescribed in uh, uh, vedas they are for prosperity originally they are not for uh, uh, upliftment of uh, Uh, self realization or something like that that is mainly for uh, prosperity are you hearing maharaj yes 
Yeah, this, yeah, the Vedas mainly deal with the three modes of nature, right? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedas deal with the three modes of nature. So the Vedas are telling us about how to improve our material life. That's the main theme of the Vedas. How to live in this world, how to be happy, materially prosperous. It's a karmakanda path. This is what you get mostly in the Vedas. There is some bhakti there in the Vedas, but not much. It's covered. It's not so easily understood. Right? Yes. And even Srila Vyasadeva got confused that he was writing all of his Puranas and he was just glorifying the path of material progress. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. And he didn't give much attention to Bhakti and he didn't really emphasize the importance of getting out the material world by devotional service. He just spoke about, you know, he'd written so many books, the Vedanta Sutra and the Mahaparat, and it's all that kind of stuff. So if you just study the Mahaparat, Jiva Goswami said, Nobody gets love of God from the Mahabharat. Mahabharat is all about karmakanda activities mostly. And a little bit there in the Bhagavad Gita, of course, from the Bhagavad Gita we get, but Bhagavad Gita is only a tiny part of Mahabharat. So even Vyasadeva got confused, got lost about the whole thing and took Narada Muni to come and Enlighten him and tell him, you know, that you, you have to emphasize the importance of devotional service. Okay, go ahead in Bhagavad Gita. Who is next? In the Bhagavad Gita. Pushpanjali. Pushpanjali Mataji is there. Hare yes, can she read? Pushpanjali. Pushpanjali Mataji? Hare Krishna Mataji, please unmute yourself. Pushpanjali Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Pushpanjali Mataji. Can you unmute yourself? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes, Mataji, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. We can, we can hear you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, you can read this paragraph. Last one. When Pushpanjali Mataji, please unmute yourself. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. 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 In the Bhagavad Gita 2.40, Lord Krishna states that God-centered activities are so valuable that just a few of them can save a person from the greatest danger. The greatest danger of life is the danger of gliding down again into the evolutionary cycle of birth and death among the uh, 84,000 species. In, if somehow or other a man misses the spiritual opportunity afforded by his human form of life falls down again into the evolutionary cycle. He must consider he must be considered most fortunate. Due to his defective senses, a foolish man cannot see that this is happening. 
Consequently, see Isok Nishad advises us to expert uh, to exert uh, our energy in the spirit of Isavasya. Being so engaged, we may wish to live for many, many years. Otherwise, a long life in itself has no value. A tree lives for hundreds and hundreds of years, but there is no point in living a long time like trees or breathing like bellows or begetting children like hogs and dogs or eating like camels. A humble God-centered life is more valuable than a, a closer hoax of a life dedicated to godless altruism or socialism. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada talks about people eager for the long life. So trees also live a long life. So how long did Shankaracharya stay in this world? Fifty-seven. When Shankaracharya disappeared from this world, how long was it? Thirty-four. How long was he here? Thirty-seven or thirty-four, my lord. Thirty-two years. Thirty-two. What about Lord Chaitanya? Forty-eight. 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 Right. So they were not here very long, but they did great work. So Prabhupada said, Bet better a moment of full consciousness than a lifetime like a tree. So we give more importance to the consciousness. We want to develop good consciousness. So Ishupanishas is telling us how we need to do it. We need to work in the spirit of Ishavasha, recognizing the Lord as the proprietor. Don't waste the human life. We've got this human body. It's a very great chance. If we waste it, we're very unfortunate. Go ahead. Next paragraph. Another Maharaji. Maharaji. Hmm. Sugopi. Who is this Sugopi? Hare Krishna, Pranam Maharaj. When altruistic activities are executed in the state of Sri Ishupanishad, they become a form of Karma Yoga. Such activities are recommended in the Bhagavad Gita 18.5 to 9, for they guarantee their executor pro protection from the danger of spreading down into the evolutionary process of birth and death. Even though such God-centered activities may be half-finished, they are still good for the executor because they will guarantee him a human form in his next birth. In this way, one can have another chance to improve the, his position on the path of liberation. All right, so karma yoga, working in karma yoga, offering the results, right? In the spirit of Ishavashya, we're offering the results for Krishna. So that guarantees one. The guarantee, the executor, that at least you get the human body next life. You can go on with your devotional step. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, right, in the sixth chapter, he describes about the yogi. He's not perfect. He will take birth in a good family. He'll get the opportunity to continue in the next life to continue devotional service. Just like Prabhupada said, he said both he and his spiritual master, they were both born in families of devotees. Prabhupada said his own father was a pure devotee. He said he used to always worship the deity and, and he made Prabhupada, 
when Prabhupada was a young man, they wanted to send him to England to be a lawyer, but his father said, no, I don't want my son to become like that. I want him to be, a, his father had him trained to play Madanga. Hmm. And then when he was a young boy also, his father arranged he could do Ratiatra. So Prabhupada said his father was pure devotee, he used to worship the deities every day. And of course, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, his father was Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So that's that kind of birth, very special when you're born in devotee family. It's because of previous birth. Go ahead. Let's have another Maharaji. Krishna. Uh, what about uh, Pujita Hari Priya? Dinu Pavan Prabhu Hare Krishna Mataji can unmute. Dinupan Prabhu, Pujita Mataji, Hare Krishna. It's taking a very long time. You're very slow. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, says he cannot unmute himself. I don't know what is the problem. He sent me the message. He said... Okay, he so unmute. have somebody else read. Hare Krishna. Hi. Yeah, he, he ha, now I can it. unmute. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, uh, come on, quick. Yeah, how one can execute God-centered activities is elaborately explained in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu by Rupa, Srila Rupa uh, Goswami, uh, we have rendered this book into English as a nectar of devotion. We recommended this valuable book to all who are interested in performing their activities in the spirit of Sri uh, Sri Ishu Nipushyabad. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Maharaj, yeah, I have read the last paragraph. Okay. So, how one can execute God consciousness activities? You've all studied Nectar of Devotion? Yeah, Maharaj. Can you tell us then what are these God centered activities? Give us some examples. You've studied nectar of devotion. Tell us what are these God centered activities that are described in nectar of devotion? Yes, Pujita Hari Puja. Please tell me some activities, God centered activities, described, which are mentioned in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Rupa Goswami mentions about 64 different activities. Chanting the holy name, reading Bhagavatam. Visiting Dham, uh, then deity worship. Okay, what, what were the five activities which were stressed? What's the... 
the five activities, Panchanga Bhakti, that any one of them can give one perfection in life. Caring Bhagavatam. Association of devotees. Caring Bhagavatam. Chanting in the Dhamma. Chanting of Holy Nam and residing in Dhamma. Deity worship. Deity worship. Holy Nam Sankirtan. Okay. This is this is the this is stressed by Rupa Goswami, and you see in our morning program, in our temples, Iskon temples, all of these activities are there: chanting the holy name, studying the Bhagavatam, uh, associating with devotees, worshiping the deities, and living in the holy dham. Temple is like a holy dam. Every temple. So this Prabhupada wanted everyone to get that opportunity to practice devotional service. So you go to the morning program in the temple, they have all these activities. If you don't go to the temple, then you do it at home. In your own home every morning. You do Mangalati, you chant the holy name, study the Bhagavatam a bit, and then you have association with devotees, get the other family members to come and sit with you, and you make your home like a holy place. So it's a very practical program for Krishna consciousness. So you can see how Krishna consciousness works. We have to dedicate the life to the service of Krishna, recognizing he is the proprietor. It's all for him. We don't need anything ourselves, but we need to depend on Krishna. You want to live a long life? Nobody wants to die, right? We all like to live long. So how to do it? Recognize Krishna as a proprietor. Work for him, dedicate every offer, everything to him. And this way we can we get the best insurance, the best policy, taking shelter of Krishna. The material world, we make so many plans how we can live a long life, how we can extend our life, how to protect ourselves. We just surrender to Krishna and depend on Krishna. At the same time, we shouldn't be foolish. Prabhupada said, if you know there's a tiger in the forest, you don't go for a walk in the forest. <laughs> so that would be crazy. Same way, if you know there's a, a big... Uh, if there's a big pandemic somewhere, you don't go running around embracing everybody because you know, a pandemic, you can get disease. So, practical also. But the important thing is the attitude which we have. We have to understand, we have to accept that everything is for Krishna, it's for Krishna's pleasure. We, we not only cook for Krishna, we work for Krishna. And we clean for Krishna. And we speak for Krishna. So everything dedicated in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada talks how people, they're fond of these different social activities, altruistic activities. They want to do good for others. They want other, they want, they like the idea of helping people. So, okay, do it in Krishna consciousness. It's nothing separate from Krishna. Krishna consciousness is into everything. Prabhupada said, even politics, we can go into politics. At 
one point devotee even went into politics and Prabhupada was encouraging. But then he saw it's, it's so much money, it's not worth it. He didn't want to put all the money that it requires. Okay, are there any questions on this verse? Anybody? Uh, Maharaj, uh, like we have read in last to last paragraph that all ism uh, Prabhupada is uh, criticizing. So that uh, we can understand like this one that if Krishna is in center, uh, then it is acceptable in the devotion. But if the, it is for sense gratification, then it is wrong. Yes, that's the principle. If we, if we do it for Krishna, that is, that is acceptable. But if we do it for our own sense gratification, that is material. You get karma. You, you, do, you do some activities, you offer something, you do some charity, welfare activities, if we do it to get some name and fame, it's not very good. You know, peop some people, they like that, they want to get fame, they like to be known, oh, so charitable, oh, he did so much. They like that idea, they like the prestige that they give charity. But a devotee doesn't do like that. Bhakti yoga, when we give something, we know it's all Krishna's, it's not mine to give. So when a devotee gives charity, he gives it unknowingly. He doesn't want people to know, keeps it secret. Because he knows it's all Krishna's, it's not mine. Karma yoga is a bit different. Karma yoga, we think I'm giving. You know, we work and then we give something from the result of our work. But in Bhakti Yoga, we, we, we surrender first. See, Karma Yoga, the surrender comes at the end. But in Bhakti Yoga, the surrender comes at the beginning. Karma Yogi thinks, I'm giving this for Krishna. Yeah, karma Yoga, Karmarpana, right? Offering the results of our work to Krishna. So the Karma Yogi, he thinks, I'm giving this to Krishna. But the Bhakti Yogi doesn't think like that. The Bhakti Yogi knows it's all Krishna's. Don't, I don't have anything to give to Krishna, it's all his. Isn't that correct? Do you agree? Nobody speaking. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Acceptance, the argument, yeah. It's all Krishna's. We have to recognize Krishna as the proprietor. If he is the proprietor, what do we have to give him? It's all his. We have to give back to him what is his. Right? Prabhupada gives the example, money lying in the street. So one person sees the money, he takes the money, puts it in his own pocket and goes and spends it. What kind of person is that? Thief. <laughs> well, he found it. It was just lying in the street. Nobody's property. Is he still a thief? Because it is Krishna's property. Yeah. Now he took the money for himself, so he's a karmi. Took it for his own sense gratification. Yeah. Right? And then somebody else, he sees the money, he doesn't want to touch it. He thinks, oh, it's maya, I'm not going to touch it, just leave it there. Who's that? 
كرمسن يا صح امم يعني وات سبيك اب يعني جاني رايت يا ذا جاني The Gyani is always renouncing everything, not this, not this, not this. And I, he doesn't want to do anything, see anything, doesn't want to see anything. So he ren even he sees money laying in the street. Oh, it's Maya, don't touch it, leave it. But what, what does the devotee do when they see the money? Yeah, he'll bring it to the temple and put it in the donation box or he'll use it for Krishna's service. Right? He takes it for Krishna. Because we know it's Krishna, Krishna is the proprietor. So this is important. This principle of using everything for Krishna. This is yoga. Body, mind and words, all in the service of Krishna. We have to use our body like that for Krishna's service. Use our mind also, Maharaj Ambarish, right? Always fix the mind on Krishna. Savaimana Krishna Pararvinda Yoy. But once the mind is fixed on Krishna, then use the senses for Krishna's service. So everything is dedicated to Krishna for his satisfaction. So it's very important for us to try to remember this principle. Then there's no karma. You don't get entangled. Just like Arjuna was going to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra and he was worried about sinful reactions. How did Krishna overcome this argument? You've all studied the Bhagavad Gita, right? Remember the different re reasons Arjuna was not going to fight? Yes, ma'am. One reason was? Yes? Um, compassion, Maharaj. Compassion, okay. Another one? And sin, sin occurs. Sorry? Sin, Sins, sin, marriage. Yes, sin, sinful reactions, sinful. yeah. Then uh, Varna Shankara. Shankara. Yeah, yeah, unwanted progeny, right? Indecision. Indecision, yeah. And there was one more. And then no Every happiness. Right. right, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be able to find Enjoyment. happiness. Right. Loss of enjoyment. Yes. So how did Krishna defeat these arguments? Uh, Krishna says, like, just perform your duty and leave the rest to, uh, leave the result. Atma Tattva. No? Compassion, compassion was, but the argument of compassion was defeated by talking about uh, soul. Compassion and... was defeated by? By talking about uh, Sankhya Yoga. Knowledge of the soul, right. Yeah. Right? And then? Temporary. Yeah. How did he defeat the, the problem about sinful reactions? When you are doing your duty as a Kshatriya, there won't be any sinful reactions, Maharaj. So what is that, doing your duty? He is a Kshatriya, so it's his duty is to establish the Dharma and for that even killing required, he's, he should do killing. But it's not just doing the duty, but it's doing the duty in a detached manner. <laughs> being <laughs> detached <laughs> from the <laughs> result. Using the buddhi Detached work, right? Yes. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives examples of people who did that kind of work. Do you remember? Yes, ma Janaka Maharaj. Yes, Janaka Maharaj and one more. No? 
nobody jal, knows. Jal Bharat? No. Nobody knows. Krishna. Lord Krishna said, I myself, I perform my duty without the, the result. Because Krishna has to show the example to everyone. He said, if I did not do my duty, the whole world would follow me. Right? So Lord Krishna himself gave himself as the example. You do your work. Karma yoga means working in a detached way. When we're detached from the result, that is karma yoga. So you work, but without attachment to the result. Because we know the work is our duty, but the result is not our duty. The result, that's given by Krishna, whatever he gives. We just try, try our best to do the duty. That's the idea. Perform our duty with detachment. And in that way, then we become free from all reactions to work. And when you work like that, you do much better when we're detached from the results. When you just go ahead and do it without worrying about the results, you can perform much nicer. You, you do much better for athletes and for businessmen and like that. They find that they, they work the best, they perform the best when they're not so worried about the results. And they're not trying, they're not just thinking about the results. But they're just simply doing it. It's a duty. So this is the idea. So this is karma yoga. So all of these activities can be done like that. With the spirit of Ishyavasya. Doing it for Krishna. That's actually, as you say, buddhi yoga. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Prindratana Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, giving donation for the Krishna calls or any for devotees or for uh, Vaishnava Prasadam or like uh, ISKCON activities is uh, considered as a devotional activity and it does not uh, attract karma. So, for that, uh, how to get detachment from there? Like when we pay, do some donation, then we feel like our name should be uh, announced or something. So it should be there or no? Well, in Bhagavad Gita, we will see charity is described in goodness, passion, and ignorance. Okay. So charity and passion is done more for our own name and fame. We want to get recognition. But charity and goodness is done in a more discreet manner without letting people know. You do it, you do it, but you, you do it as a sense of duty, but you do it without letting everybody know about it. So that That's everybody includes actually the, the more the goodness. own spiritual master, if spiritual master should know it or no? Yeah, spiritual master, if you're giving the donation to the spiritual master, then yeah, of course, you know, he's going to know about it. But if you're giving it to the temple, you don't need to tell the spiritual master. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. But you, you know, you, you, can, you can tell him if you like, confidentially, you know. You don't want to make a big show of it, a big, you know, to advertise it in front of the general public. That's the main point. But, you know, spiritual master, some the confidential way and like that, you can mention to him and get his blessings that you want to donate, do this charity. Mm, this okay. charity you, in the mode of goodness is given to a qualified person and a pro, uh, no, on a, on a Proper time, proper place, for a proper purpose, good purpose. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. The highest charity. Uh -huh. Any other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. May I ask a question from the mantra one? Yes. The last class. Okay. Uh, in reference to unnecessary attachments, which was mentioned in the last para of mantra one, uh, uh, Maharaj, what are necessary attachments? Are there any necessary attachments? Can we mean attachments to family, such as wife, children, grandchildren, and the present work as a necessary yeah. attachments? Yes, that's necessary attachment. Naturally, it should be attachment to the family. I think in, there's a purport in the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada talks about that. So naturally, there will be some attachment for the family. That's a part of duty. That you have responsibilities, you're taking care. So it's part of prescribed duty to look after them, care for them. Think of their welfare. But it should be controlled. It shouldn't be too much. You know, that we want to give everything you want, contribute, you know, people for the education of their children. They'll borrow so much money to send their children to faraway countries to get education. And they end up paying the money back all, all their life. It takes them their whole life to pay back the money they borrow for their children's education. So, yeah, you have to get your children educated, but there's a limit to it. You know, how much education and how much you can actually spend for their education. There has to be some kind of control there. Then it comes to marriage. That's another thing. You know, the, you want to get the daughter married or something, you spend so much money for the wedding, the dowry, everything. So there has to be some control over these things. It shouldn't be over endeavor. So much effort that it becomes a burden for the rest of the life. Understand? Yes, yes, Maharaj. So basically, we need to balance both. Yes, there has to be some kind of balance there. It has to be reasonable. All right, you have to get the daughter married. You have to give dowry. But, you know, how much dowry you have to give, you know? <laughs> there has to be some limit there. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Srila Prabhupada took sannyas. He still had a, a daughter not yet married. But still, he went out and left home. He said, Krishna will take care. Krishna did. So these are all yeah, responsibilities in material life. Devotee is not irresponsible. That's an important point Prabhupada also makes in purports in the Bhagavatam. The devotee is not irresponsible. He has to take care of his different duties and responsibilities. They have People have to be looked after. But with, with some conditions, you know, not that it, it has to be to a, you know, very high and very great extent that you have to burden yourself for the rest of the life to satisfy them. 
So it has to be some balance, as you see. And we have to depend on Krishna also. Because even, you, you know, it's not just only money and everything. You may spend so much money for educating, doesn't mean the child will be so successful in material life. You may spend so much for the marriage of the girl, doesn't mean the marriage will be successful. Nowadays, of course, so many marriages also break up. Now we have to be cautious, take care. Okay. Any other points? Okay, I think we'll finish here. So we'll see you on Friday. We'll go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. I have one question regarding the open book question. Oh, open book question, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Just regarding, we have three questions. How many questions to be answered, Maharaj? I'll find out for you. I'll have to ask the managers and I'll let you know on Friday. Okay. okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, ma'am. Hare okay, Krishna. His Holiness Bhakti Vinkta Vinasa Krishna Swamaji Ki. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me all? Yeah, Krishna. Yeah, Prabhuji, uh, for uh, this Bhakti Shastri, this unit, we need to pay six dinar upper head to Prema Maya Prabhu. Please pay as per the same uh, procedures, either by benefit pay or directly to him, uh, six BD per head. If two members, Mataji and Prabhu, means 12 BD. And those who are not paid last one, that is a five BD. Please pay to frame of my approval. If you have any doubts about the benefit pay or anything, you can contact him. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Hare. On Friday class,